NHL preseason. It is what it is. And the Central Division, while the standings do not matter, I went ahead and printed the standings out as a part of the preview uh, for the first game of the regular season, which is going to be the National Predators versus the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa Bay. I wanted to get myself in better habit and good practice for the regular season, so I decided to utilize the final preseason game to go ahead and do a full show breakdown so I could get myself back in the groove of doing this on a daily basis. So let's start with the Dallas Stars finishing first overall in the Central Division during the preseason season in six games they went 4-1-1 and nine points the Minnesota Wild went 4-1-0 and and had eight points on the season St. Louis Blues also with eight points the Chicago Blackhawks with six Arizona with six Winnipeg Jets with five Colorado with four and the National Predators with three. Uh, with a record of 1-4 and 1-6 games played in the preseason, the National Predators were only able to accrue three total points. They went 1-0-1 and one on home ice, but 0-4 oh on the road. 13 goals for, 22 goals against a minus nine goal differential here in the preseason. But again, these results truly, truly do not matter. The National Predators are dealing with a first-year general manager who has assembled mostly a new roster, a first-year head coach, who is uh, not new to the organization, but it's been a minute since he's been a part of the organization, and a, a totally new style of play for this Nashville Predators team. So I did not expect results in the preseason, but we did see uh, small glimpses. We saw small moments where the Predators could execute the system and could fundamentally work Andrew Brunette's style of play. And when we did see it all put together, it looked impressive. It's going to take some time for the team to adjust after Laviolette and Hines now to go to Brunette, who is a totally different style uh, than the Predators have ever had in their franchise history, uh, opening things up, faster transition hockey, more speed, more pace, more fun. Uh, th these are concepts pretty far into a Nashville Predators uh, offensive uh, unit. So it's going to take a little while to get these things instilled and adjusted and become instinctual. And that's a, that's a point I'm going to talk about a little bit more during the analysis. But for the Nashville Predators, the preseason is completely wrapped up now. And while while it was underwhelming and somewhat uh, under uh, exciting for just about every aspect of things. They were able to get six games under the belt with a brand new head coach and a lot of new players and some good competitive roster battles uh, have played out in front of us. As a matter of fact, the Nashville Predators bringing in Fajimo here at the end of the preseason, kind of a surprise, but shows that Barry Trotz is still willing to be aggressive, even right up to the beginning of the regular season. Mark Jankowski did clear waivers, did head to Milwaukee after the pickup of Fajimo. So we'll see what the final cut or two is for the Nashville Predators before we get to this game against Tampa Bay, before the Nashville Predators preseason is wrapped up. And let's now turn the page and move on to the regular season. The Nashville Predators will face off against Tampa Bay in their first game. It'll be the first of two meetings between the Nashville Predators and the Tampa Bay Lightning this season. The second one will take place on December the 7th here in Nashville at Bridgestone Arena for the Nashville Predators once they wrap up this game in Tampa Bay at home to open things up Thursday night versus the Seattle Kraken. And then on Saturday, back on the road in Boston on the 17th, back home versus Edmonton on the 19th, back on the road at the New York Rangers on the 21st, back home against San Jose. It is a yo-yo of October for this Nashville Predators team. So it is not going to be easy going into Tampa Bay to open the season with a special start time. Make sure you make a note of that. And then coming home to open the home schedule against Seattle, another playoff team from last year. Not easy. And Boston Edmonton, of course, provide uh, certain difficulties every time you face off against them. So looking forward to dropping the puck on the season and getting things underway. The Nashville Predators will take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. They went 4-2 and two in the preseason. They had 8 points total. 3-0 and oh at home. A plus 2 Two goal differential for the preseason. Uh, taking just a quick look at a couple of scores from the preseason for the Bolts just to show you what how they were doing. On the 27th of September, a 2-1 overtime win here in Nashville. On the 29th, a 4-0 victory versus Carolina. And then following that up on the last day of September, the 5-4 win versus Nashville on home ice. On the 3rd of October, a 2-0 win versus Florida. And on the 5th of October, it was a 6-3 loss versus Florida. So the Carolina, Florida, Tampa Bay round robin rotation triangle of preseason and training camp uh, continues on for another year. I don't mind it so much. It gives the players and the team an opportunity to go down and play in Florida at a very, very nice time of year, and that's uh, team building, team bonding, all the things you can say. I, I kind of miss the Predators preseason from many years ago where they would uh, spread out around the region and play games all over uh, in Memphis, in Huntsville, in up in Kentucky, where, 
where they would truly, truly work on growing the fan base. I, I know it hasn't been necessary to grow the fan base over the last couple of years, but with the renewed vigor and energy and youth to this team, maybe going back to that style, and it was probably too late to do it this season, but maybe going back to that style in the future is something the Preds would look into. I, I truly think the Preds would do good to put on a little bit of a preseason game in uh, some of their other regional rinks. Uh, they could really start to develop those fan bases in those particular areas, and I'm thinking about you know, Knoxville. Knoxville would be a really good spot uh, for the Preds to find themselves a, a rink to play a preseason game at. I'm obviously in, in preseason form still because I bumped the mic like six times already during uh, this segment right here. So for Tampa Bay, preseason is wrapped up. The National Predators preseason is wrapped up. These two teams will face off on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, during the preseason, uh, they did uh, compile some statistics. Goals for the Preds at 13, 2.17 per game. Uh, that, that number's pathetic, but we talked about it already. Uh, the goals hopefully are going to come later. The goals against, 22 for the Predators, 3.70 is uh, not a not a healthy number. We need to see the goals for go up, the goals against come down. Shots for the Preds generate 193 during the preseason, 32.1 per game. That's a good respectable number. The shots against, they gave up 201, 33.5 per game against. So that's that's a little too high. Uh, the Preds trended very high in that statistical category all last season, though. Uh, this is something that does concern me. And again, Andrew Brunette uh, is a bit of a power play wizard specialist. Uh, I'm hopefully not putting too much uh, hype on that, but he definitely turned the New Jersey power play around and before that, the Florida power play around and he'll be coaching the power play here, but only two of 28 uh, in the entirety of the preseason, 7.1%. Uh, please no, uh, please no single digit uh, power play percentage conversions uh, this season for the National Force. On the PK, 16 out of 24 kill. That's only 67%. Again, power play uh, efficiency needs to go up. Penalty kill efficiency uh, also needs to go up. Eight power plays goals, goals against in six games is not, not going to be a winning strategy. Uh, same metrics on the other side of the ledger. Uh, coming out of the preseason, the Tampa Bay Lightning scored 18 goals. Not uncommon to see them scoring three goals or more per game. They gave up 16, 2.67. That's a respectable number. Shots for 186. That means 31 per game. Their shots against uh, incredibly high in the preseason. 221 shots against 36.8 shots against per game. That is a very, very high number. If this was regular season, that would be near the worst in the league, without a doubt. Uh, their power play converted eight times on 22 Opportunities, 36.3%. That would be pacing near the tops of the NHL in regular season uh, numbers. In the penalty kill, they were 21 out of 23, 91%. Also, a very, very good number. Only two power play goals against in six games in the preseason. So, Tampa Bay seems to have their roster already lined up and ready to go uh, coming into this regular season game. They're always a tough team for the Nashville Purse, and they've been one of the premier teams of this generation for all of us watching the NHL. There's absolutely no doubt with some of the stars that Tampa Bay are able to continue to roll out and at the point they are in their career, uh, to see Vasilevsky one more time. Vasilevsky versus Rene was a staple in our coverage for several seasons. And now to see Vasilevsky just still, still going on and leading the Tampa Bay Bolts to a very, very successful seasons. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So the Tampa Bay Lightning, not an easy opponent for the Nashville Predators in this first game of the season. It's going to take the Preds, I think, somewhere between five and ten games into the regular season to truly start getting things ramped up, make that seven times. I'm bumped the cord now, uh, but with the Nashville Predators facing off against Tampa Bay, Seattle, Boston, Edmonton, the Rangers, it might not be until the 21st versus San Jose on home ice that the Preds truly start start to find uh, a little bit of a groove and I hope it's by that game because uh, if not then uh, it's going to be a difficult start to the season and for the National Purse I know it's going to be a long season there's a lot of change a lot of youth coming into the lineup a lot of different parts but I expect the National Purse to be competitive challenging and on the bubble and uh, at least a competitive game in and game out they may not win game in and game out but they are going to be uh, competitive that's what I'm looking forward to I'm looking for the continued development of these players underneath a new general manager, new head coach, and some new veterans brought in, especially Ryan O'Reilly, would be who I'm talking about right there. So, based on the limited information we have from the preseason, that's got it all set up for Game 1 for the National Predators versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. We'll have the full game recap coming up in the evening, just after that game wraps up. No doubt we're going to jump right back in the bunker and we are going to get to it. We cannot wait to be back covering each and every game, breaking it down. As a matter of fact, I got a game breakdown coming up for you and it's coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. First, let's hear from our returning sponsor and partner, Rebirth Sports. Love these guys. Check out their commercial right here. We'll be back after this. <laughs> 